it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord whoa, whoa. Jesus, every war he wages, he will win. Oh, I'm not backing down from any giants, cause I know how this story ends. Yes, I know how this story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. And you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, you turn
for me She loves like a hurricane And I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves our souls. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Christian. We're so glad that you've joined us this morning for our online service, and I pray that it can be an encouragement to you. I pray that it can help you draw closer to God and help draw closer to others. Let's go to God in word of prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings and your love. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Father, we thank you for family, and we thank you for spiritual family and physical family. We thank you for the blessings or the time that we get to spend with our loved ones, God. And we're grateful, Father, for all that you do and all the ways that you work. Father, I ask that pray that you move today. God, speaking to our hearts through your word, help us to understand what you are saying and help us to put into practice the things that you call us to do. We are so grateful for Jesus and his sacrifice, his resurrection, as we just celebrated. And we're so grateful for all the ways that uh, you move in the ways that you work, in the ways that you bless, in the ways that you provide. Father, we pray for what's going on around the world, the wars, the suffering, the death, the dying, God, the famine, the drought, the civil wars. 
God, there's just a whole myriad of things going on, but we know that you are in control. We know, Father, that uh, you have the best plan to see the most people saved. And we pray, God, that we could be a part of that plan, God, executing, God, what you would have us to do so that people may know you. God, help us to be bold in preaching the gospel. Be with me today as I preach and teach. And I ask, Lord God, that uh, your blessings uh, upon, be upon us and that your name be glorified. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is going to be a sermon union. In fact, most of our sermons online are going to be sermon unions. Next week, we have an all church worship service. So there'll be a brief communion service. So I want to invite you out to our Smoke Ranch building next week uh, to enjoy uh, a time of musical worship. Uh, so we are reading the Bible through in a year, our theme, All Things New and live, uh, New Creations Living New Lives. And so we've reached a point in our reading where we're actually in the book of First Corinthians. And I wanted to do a brief Bible study on First Corinthians chapter three. The title of the lesson is simply No Other Foundation But Jesus. And you'll understand why the title as we get into 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But just to kind of give a little bit of background, uh, the church in Corinth was started, started by Paul, and they were near and dear to his heart. Uh, he, he established a church and then went on to establish other churches. He's writing this letter in response to uh, reports that there's divisions among the church, that there's uh, there are people who are calling themselves super apostles or people that are causing doubt about Paul's apostleship, his authenticity. Uh, they're calling the question his leadership. They are uh, some leaders are calling people to follow themselves instead of following just Jesus. And so Paul is addressing a lot of different issues in First Corinthians. In First Corinthians, and we're going to pick it up after he talks uh, a lot about. Um, walking by the Spirit in chapter 2. Uh, he addresses the divisions in chapter 1, uh, living by the Spirit in chapter 2. And then he gets into chapter 3. And chapter 3 basically has a message to the people, to the leaders, back to the people, and then basically to everybody. And we're going to read the whole chapter, and, and I'll stop periodically just to talk about different things that are going on in it. So let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God had been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who water, waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. Now, when we read this particular passage of scripture, Paul is addressing the church in general, the people, brothers and sisters, and he loves them. He laid down his life for them. But others have come, as he described, where he planted, others have come and watered, uh, have gained more followers to Christ, have, uh, and those followers only know maybe Apollos and maybe Peter came through. So those followers that were converted under his leadership only know Peter. And so you can see when you're thinking humanistically, you tend to follow the leader instead of really understanding that we're called to follow Christ. And so... Paul addresses the people and he says, you are worldly. There is a way that we can think and process information that is worldly, that is thinking like the world instead of thinking like God, instead of thinking like Christ. And he talks about that there's um, jealousy and quarreling among them. And I'm sure it's over 
who whose leader is best or, you know, whose preacher is best or whose group is better. And there's quarreling, there's jealousy, there's all sorts of things going on. And he says, are you not just acting like mere humans? And so the intense thing about what we see here in the first century is that we see this going on in the 21st century when people are are associating or hitching their wagons to certain personalities or certain people, even though they may not be preaching the truth, they may not even be using the scriptures, but man, I love that personality or I love their message or I love what they say versus really striving to follow Jesus. And Paul goes as far as to say Apollos, who was the one who watered, and himself who was the one who planted, are nothing. Only God matters because God is the one that makes it grow. So a couple of points as we really focus in on Jesus in this sermon union, I want us to help us, I want to help us understand something. The church, the body of believers, is built on Christ alone. Christ is the foundation, is the chief cornerstone, is the foundation that Paul laid out. Hey, when people became believers, they became believers of Jesus, followers of Jesus, the person, his teachings, his lifestyle, what he taught, what he preached. They followed Jesus, not Paul, not Apollos, not Peter, not these other leaders of whom some of them, maybe not the ones I named, of, of, of some of them were trying to get people to follow them. And Paul even makes a remark that he didn't come to baptize, not because he didn't believe in baptism. He says, I didn't come to baptize, meaning to get followers to follow me. He came to preach Jesus. He came to preach Jesus and to get people to follow Jesus. And so understand the church, the body of believers is built on Christ. It's not built on personalities. There are great speakers. There are charismatic leaders. There, there are great people in, in the religious world. But the church isn't built on personalities. It's not built on gimmicks. It's not built on programs. In fact, what you use to attract people to you or to your church or local, local congregation is what you're going to have to keep giving people more of to keep them. So if you offer, hey, we got great music, you're going to have to keep improving the music. If it's like, hey, we got a great coffee bar, you better get muffins too. I believe that we should preach Jesus and him crucified and call others to follow Jesus. Why? Because the thing that we need to give people is the gospel, is Jesus, him crucified, him resurrected. That's what the church is all about. And Paul makes a, a, a kind of a subtle point, but a point that I think is important. He says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly mere infants in Christ. He calls them immature because of their lack of living by the Spirit. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8, and talked about the Spirit being the, the power to live this godly life. And it's so important to understand that we are not to live according to the flesh, according to our feelings, according to what we think. We are called to live according to the Spirit and what the Spirit calls us to do. And the Spirit will always call us to live by Christ's Word. He will bring into remembrance the things that Christ taught. And we are to follow the Spirit. And, and if, if, if it's the way we're living is glorifying God, we're, we're, we're living by the Spirit. If the way that we're living is not glorifying to God, we're following the flesh. If, if we're living and doing what the Scriptures call us to do, we're living by the Spirit. But if we're doing the things that simply we want to do or what people are telling us to do and they're not biblical, then we're not living by the Spirit. The difference he makes between the mature and the immature is how they live. Do they live according to the Spirit, the mature? Or do they live according to the flesh, the immature? Where would you fall into? Where would you say you fall into? Someone that's living according to the spirit or someone that is still dominated by living by the flesh? And you might not be the best one to answer that. There might be people that really know your spiritual walk and know you spiritually and know you in your personality. Ask them, hey, how, how do you see my life? 
Do you see my life as a life lived by the Spirit? Because at the end of the day, we're called to follow Jesus, be filled with the Spirit, and be led by Him as well. And so he, he gets into that message to the people. And then he, he talks and ends it in verse 9, for, you, for we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field God's building. So now he makes a distinction between that leadership who are the co-workers of God and who they are serving, the God's God's building, God's field, the, the church. And he makes this distinction because he understands that as a co-worker, he is building something. And he gets into that in verse 10. He says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. You know, this is an intense passage of scripture and often taught incorrectly. Paul is really going after these leaders, these so-called church builders. He's not necessarily going after the church members, but these these leaders who are setting themselves up as expert builders or setting themselves up as people to be admired or adored. And he goes after them by saying, look, there is no other foundation other than Christ. That's what we are to build upon. And what we use What kind of material we use, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, is going to determine our reward. Now, I've heard it taught, hey, what are you building your life with? Wood, hay, straw, you know, things like that. But I I want us to think in in terms of um, material. So you had these builders, and Paul is admonishing them to build wisely. He's admonishing them to make sure that they're building so that what they what they build can survive the fire. And I think about this is what are we teaching people? What are the builders, the leaders teaching the people? Are they teaching the people Jesus? Because I guarantee you the teachings of Jesus, they're, they're precious stones, they're gold, they're silver. They are things that will last. That's what it says in Matthew chapter seven, when, when Jesus says, hey, whoever listens to these words of mine builds on the rock as a foundation of their house. And, and the storms come and the rains beat against that house and the winds beat against that house and it did not fall. But when we are teaching about feelings, when we're teaching about the latest fad, when we're teaching about, uh, hey, this is the latest trend. Hey, this is what's popular in the world. We're building with wood, hay, or straw, and it will be burned up. Peter talks about a faith more precious than gold that is not burned up by the fire. And he talks about there will be a day where what, when what is built will be tested by fire. And I believe that's the trials and the tribulations of life. And in this case, maybe even persecution. And so there's a warning to the builders to build wisely. Why? They'll be saved, but there'll be be one escaping through the flames. And and I've heard people say, man, I I wanna be that guy that gets into heaven and and, just get there even though my, my tailcoats might be on fire. That's not what it's talking about talking about how we as leaders build the church. Now, all of you who are listening to this aren't leaders, aren't trying to build a church. I will say this. I want you to ask yourself, if you're not a church builder, but you're the ones that are making up the material, what kind of material are you? Are you putting in the spiritual work necessary to be suitable spiritual building material? See, we're given, as, as, a, as a builder, we're, we're, we're giving the lessons, we're, we're giving the word, but as a congregation, 
Are we receiving the word and putting it into practice? Are we receiving the word and, and, and applying it to our lives? What type of work are you putting in? Well, what is the work? Living by the Spirit of God, Romans chapter 8, we talked about this. Paul talked about that's the difference between mature and immature. What's what, what else is the work? Faithfully going through the tests and trials, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 through 9, talks about going through the tests and coming out proven, genuine, a, a sincere faith. And so what does it mean to faithfully go through trials? It means holding on to God through the circumstances. It means holding on to the truth, though our feelings and circumstances may preach something different. We know God is good. God is faithful. And the answer is always going to be found in him. What else is the work? It's building character. Romans chapter five, verse three through five. It, it's it's going through the tests. It's going through the suffering. It's, it's developing perseverance and character and character hope. This is the work that that we as a congregants need to put into practice so that we could be gold, silver, and precious stones, so that we can put uh, structure and strength and durability to God's temple. I'll talk more about that. Are we reliable? Are we competent? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, uh, Timothy is told to entrust his teaching to reliable men. And, 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 I, and I ask, are you a reliable man? Are you a reliable woman? So that when you're given this instruction, you're able to go teach others. Romans chapter 15, verse 14, Paul said to the church in Rome, hey, I believe you're competent and, and full of goodness and, and, and righteousness to, to, to teach and to help others. Is that you? You see, as a builder, we have our responsibility to build wisely, to build a, a structure that will last. But I believe as members of a local church, members of God's church, the call to us or the call to you is to make sure you're doing the work to be that gold, to be that silver, to be those precious stones. Ask yourself this question. If a ministry needed to be built on me or around me, am I spiritual enough to handle something like that? If the answer is no, then what am I doing about it? If the answer is yes, are you allowing it to happen? Ultimately, I believe God is in control and it's all in God's timing, but we need to be ready when that call is made. Let's go on to verse 16. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? Now he's going back to the congregation. Now, remember, he's making this connection, God's field, God's building. And then he says, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person for God's temple is sacred and you together are the temple. So again, this scripture often is used, you know, um, if you hurt yourself or if you destroy your temple or mistreat your temple, you know, you are the temple that God's going to destroy you. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that there are leaders, there are people that are building incorrectly that are out to destroy God's church. God's going to handle those people. He says, but you have to understand as a church, as the people, he says, you together are God's temple. We together are God's temple. Now let that sink in. We together are God's temple. Not you individually. It's simply God's temple. Now that's taught later on in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 when it's talking about immorality and being united with prostitutes, etc. But in this context, he's talking about this community mindset of being God's temple. God's temple should be made of gold, silver, and precious stones because it will go through the fire of it to, to purify it from all impurities. But are you community-minded? Think about this question. When you think about your life, your time, your resources, and your effort, do you think about the impact it will have on the rest of the people around you or the rest of us in the church? See, I think too many of us, we think, individualistically, where it's my time, my effort, my resources, my, 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 and what I do with it is my business because it's my personal relationship with God. I think there are aspects that that's true. But Paul is trying to appeal to the congregants, to the people, to the believers. You together make up the temple. That means you've got to be thinking what I do affects others. What I don't do affects others. When I am not spiritual, it affects my brothers and sisters, whether they see me or not. Why? Because we together are the temple. 
if you isolate yourself, if you if you separate yourself, you hurt the temple. You hurt yourself and you hurt the temple, the people. We need each other. Hebrews chapter 10 talks about not giving up meeting together. Sometimes we make plans. We're going to be apart from the body for months, for, for, for weeks, for, for many, many days. And we give no thought about the impact that's going to have on the people around you. And we got to think community minded. Think about it. If we really thought in a community mindset, would we make the same choices we're making today? Or would we make different choices because we know that the choices we make impact other people? And this goes from volunteering. Um, this goes to attending church. This goes all the way through attending small group. This goes to having lunches together, being connected communally. And so he goes on, verse 18, do not deceive yourselves. If any of you think you are wise by the standards of this age, you should become fools for so, so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. As it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. He knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So then no more boasting about human leaders. All things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours and you are Christ and Christ is of God. So Paul is calling the people back to a spiritual understanding of who they are in Christ. He says, all are yours. God works together for the good of, he brings all things together for the good of those who love him or call according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 29 talks about those he called, he called to be conformed to the likeness of his son. All are yours and you are of Christ and Christ is of God. We have to understand that the foundation is Jesus. And we have to understand that we need to be building our lives on that foundation. And we need to be doing the work so that we could be that gold, that silver, those precious stones upon which the church is built, the temple is built, with which the temple is built. I want to close out in Colossians chapter 2. And there's a verse there that I think is so, so, so important. In Colossians chapter 2, starting in verse 6, it says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. As we take communion together, I want us to think about a couple of things. Am I community-minded? Am I living as part of the temple together with my brothers and sisters? Am I doing the work to be that gold, that silver, those precious stones with which the temple is built? God's temple is built. Am I living by the Spirit? Am I walking by the Spirit? Am I uh, attracted to Jesus and not just leaders? Am I following the person, the teachings, and the preaching of Jesus, Jesus Christ? He is the one who died. He is the one who is re resurrected. He is the one we are to follow. Ask ourselves these questions because as it says, as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him. We need to live this kind of life because if we do, God's temple is going to shine. It's going to be that city on top of a hill to bring God glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. I pray these words can strike a nerve in our hearts that we can remember Christ during our time of meditation or communion and just remember that everything that we have comes because of him. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Bless this time. We take the bread, the body broken, and the fruit of the vine, the blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Help us to do this in a worthy manner, understanding all that you have done for us through Christ. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you again for joining us online. We are so glad that you did. We'd like to invite you to continue your experience by joining a discussion and fellowship. All you have to do if you would like to join is click on the link in the description below the video. We hope that you really enjoy that. If you are not watching it live, we would like to invite you to get more information, to ask a question, or to maybe even join a Bible study by clicking on the link in the description below the video. Feel free to explore and get more information, but whatever you do, have a great week. God bless. Thank you for coming.